Good morning, everyone. And I'd like to welcome you here today to the Jackson County Board of Supervisors meeting for Tuesday, October 3rd of 2023. And with me today is Don Schwenker, Ian Flagle, myself, Mike Steinitz, our your county supervisor, Lisa Smith, our county auditor, Bjorn is IT uh, director, maybe. Just here. He'll be supervisor or something. Yeah. He's just Luan, Luan, our executive assistant in the background here. And Mary is here with the media. And our first on our agenda today is Laura. And hey, Laura, are you there? You're, you're in my toilet. Okay, we will <laughs> move on to Mr. Todd Kinney, who is ready, willing. Yes, to... I'm here. Can you hear me? I could not hear you before. I can hear you now. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Nope. Go ahead, Laura. So sure. Uh, um, All right. let, let me do this. This is Laura Carson from uh, ECI. No, yeah, of course, the Historic Preservation Commission. She's here for the Jackson County Historic Preservation Committee. Okay. Correct. You're on that board too, right? <laughs> and you're just requesting to lower the commission members from 12 to 7, correct? Correct. It's been difficult for us to maintain a quorum with 12. Members, uh, we're doing much better with the, the six that we currently have. Uh, we checked with the state of Iowa and they said a lot of commissions have about seven, so that's a good number. And we just think it'll be easier you know, easier for us to do uh, what we need to do if we just have seven members. Currently have six, you said? 12 or 12? We currently we have seven uh, when we have, when we, well, and we need, need everybody there to have a meeting. So that's been difficult for us. Uh, we sure appreciate the volunteers that we do have and who serve on that commission. It sounds logical. Uh, 12 sounds like a large number anyway. Um, and it's not an odd number. That seems kind of. Yeah. yeah. So when this was presented to me yesterday, I took a look as far as um, you're actually it, this would be done by resolution today that I gave you this morning. We are amending two resolutions that previously had established the Historic Preservation Commission. So I am asking in this resolution that you have before you today to amend to pre the way that the commission is, is set up it is a 12 member commission. And I was concerned about the vacancies and the terms of everybody, but it would appear that if you approve the seven member commission as it is, they currently do have seven members. There are five vacant positions. What this would do then is that two people would be expiring in 25, two people would be expiring in 23, and three people would be expiring in 24. So if it's your intentions, can we just leave the terms for everybody the same? Yeah. Yeah, I would say yes, if that's the wish of the uh, preservation board. Yes, that'd be fine with us. Okay, do are you reading just a heading here or what are we doing? So if you if you choose to do this, I would need you to approve amending resolution number 276-18-88 and amending resolution number 582-08-09-2011 and approving resolution number 994-10-03-2023 to change the number of members from 12 to 7. I would make that motion. I second that. Uh, I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 994-10-03-2023 as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 The same sign. Motion carried. There you go. Okay, Laura. Thank you. For us today. No, just a big thank you. Bye-bye now. Yeah, and then pass our... Uh, Pass our thanks on to the board and commission that uh, we appreciate what they're doing and hopefully everything goes well for you. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, stuff to yeah, not well, we do appreciate what they're doing anyway. It's, 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 it's not one of them highly paid jobs, you know, that people have to do and then uh, don't have to do, but we appreciate them volunteering and stepping forward. So anyway, we will move on to Mr. Todd Kinney, our Jackson County engineer. All right, good morning. Good morning, Todd. So the first on the agenda is a, uh, a utility permit for pressing telephones to bore uh, communication cable, fiber optic, 
uh, basically under 45th Street to go to service a, a Ben site. So I don't see any issue with it. Just I would recommend approval. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to approve uh, Preston Telephone Company, uh, Bore Fiber Optic Line and 45th Street as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Both same size. Motion carried. All right. Next is a, 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 a second entrance on the north side of 150th Street of Class C farm entrance. Um, the side business checks out good both ways. Don't see any issue with it. Recommend approval. Motion to approve. Very good. Motion and second. Is this for Daniel Weaver? That's correct. One of them. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 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 And uh, motion made. Uh, motion and a second to approve Daniel Weaver from Farmers Creek Section Twenty Second Entrance um, on Hundred Fifty Street as presented. All those in favor say aye. Right. Aye. Opposed. Same sign. Motion carried. The next two are for Lawrence Deppy. This one is for a Class D field entrance. Um, this one the <laughs> has limited sight distance on 180th. Um, so to be a sign required uh, from the west approach, possibly from both approaches, but for sure from the west, I need to verify that distance on the, it says 395 feet. Um, that would be marginal. So we gotta, I would need to decide whether we need to put up two hidden driveway signs, one from each direction. So, but one is definitely gonna be required from the west. And whose expense is that? For the policy, this is the landowners. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Are you approving just the one? Yeah, just the one. I have a motion and a second to approve uh, Lawrence Deppish uh, permit for a field entrance on the north side of 180th Street as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And the next one's for Lawrence Deppy as well uh, on 250th Avenue. That one is site distance is fine, so no issues with that one. Recommended for the motion approved. Second. Motion and second to approve Lawrence Deputy Richmond sec section for 33. Field entrance as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion <laughs> okay. Uh, next is the uh, discussion uh, to accept, motion to accept the employee resignation. Oh, you don't know who it is? Yeah, I do. Oh, okay. Well, you right. got your pulse to the community. <laughs> okay. Or I don't know, that's saying it politically correct. I do. Um, yeah, so uh, I can say the name, right? Yeah. Kevin Coos, Cub, um, contacted us last week. And, he, you know, for various reasons, he wants to uh, uh, res resign his position and, and do some other things and take care of some family stuff. So. You don't have any effective date. Um, yeah, I should. I can get you that. Okay. It's, you didn't, I thought you had a copy of actual resolution. I don't have it with me. So yeah, I'll get you that date, but uh, it's, it's two weeks from now, basically. From two weeks Friday. from now or from last Thursday? From, I think it's two weeks from, he was off last week. And he was starting his two weeks last week. So I believe it was from last week, but I can get you that date. And then would be like this Friday. Yeah. No, he's got he's got a he was taking his time uh in comp and everything and it, I think it pushed him out. It was uh it was gonna be just over two weeks, I think. <laughs> and so we would proceed with posting. Yeah, so basically you accept his resignation that basically uh creates the vacancy creates a vacancy so we can post it. We'll do as probably, I mean, typically you would do a resolution to remove him from payroll. If you, well, you guys do that by motion, I assume? We do, we do. Yeah, so yeah. when that comes, when I get his final date, we'll do a motion to remove him from payroll, but this basically resignation allows me to post the position internally. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the employee resignation of Kevin Coos, um, effective as stated. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. We'll make that resolution removing from payroll next week, I'm assuming. Motion. We'll do a motion next week, too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 
real quick too on 49th street bridge uh s2 is supposed to get in there and do the grading today or the rest of this week and then guardrail next week and should, hopefully not avoid wood it'll be open by the end of next week 49th street uh that's the one down by Preston. No, that's the one over north uh northwest of Miles. Oh, okay. That's the one this right here. That's the contract labor bridge. Okay. Uh, the the one down by Preston, uh north of 64. They they drove the abutment pile. I think they got some wind pile to drive yet, so it'll be another couple of weeks yet before that one opens. But uh we're gonna have Alex come up. James taking his two-week class. He's considered a team leader. So we have to do these form 107s. Basically, it's a form you send to the DOT to say, hey, we have a new structure to put on the inventory. So Jaden will take care of doing those forms. When Alex comes up to do the initial inspection where you have to input all the data for the new bridge, Alex will help or walk Jane through that for the for 49th Street Bridge and for the Otter Creek Bridge um, on 208 Street, because those two will be done. And then from then on, uh, Jane should be able to do the initial inspections for each bridge we get done. So, um, and then as far as retrieval work, um, looks like we only have about we have like nine miles left to do. And I need I got a couple of questions I need to talk to Rick about when we meet. We got our safety meeting this morning, so that's why I'm kind of rushing through this to yeah to get over there. But. Um, so far, I mean, if you recall way back when, I thought we would be doing this till the end of October. Uh, God, what again, we should finish ahead of that. Uh, but, uh, you know, we got, we had to stop there for a few days because it was too dry and then stop again because <laughs> it was too wet. But all in all, I think the process has gone schedule wise as kind of what we had foreseen. I uh, hope next year, you know, things will, uh, go a little bit quicker once we get on the second cycle when we do these roads for a second time in four years it should go hopefully substantially quicker because we won't be dealing with we won't be correcting as much profile it should be closer to what it should be from the start so anyway the only I, comments i've had is you know is that it's a substantial crown and i said yeah i get it but it's going to settle and it's going to get graded and so my question is how soon or how long before they grade them now i guess sir and there's someone probably in need or even the rest of our roads. Well, they probably bladed them. If if we got moisture, they got a, they would have been on them blading again. Uh, they'll blade them at least one or if not two more times yet, what I would call maintenance blading. Yeah, when you're used to flat roads, 6% probably does seem like quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And that's a concern for the winter time, you know, and I said, well, it should be much easier to surface some gravel with the, with the ground on it anyway. Yeah, it's harder. It'll be easier to scrape up rock in the middle when you actually have a, a middle that's raised instead right. of a middle that's lower. So, um, Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Todd. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. And we will back up a little bit to Mr. John Keyes, our Jackson County Attorney. Good morning. Uh, hi. Morning, board members. Thanks for uh, thanks for thanks for squeezing me in. Um, if I could just set up just real quickly, uh, the reason I asked for a little bit of your time today. So uh, some of the residents that live in the Bellevue area along the, uh, the train track and the proposed uh, new siding, I have been talking to my office. The Hammonds have been sort of been the spokesperson for those uh, couple hundred people. And of course, along with other issues, they're, they're concerned about um, the additional horn no noise that would be caused maybe up to 16 times a day. And so just as part of my duties, I contacted um, the attorney for the railroad that we've been using. I think um, you folks might have met her in Bellevue. She was down there at one of the meetings. And uh, I asked her, I said, listen, is there anything you can do about that? Can you create a quiet zone? Uh, I know this is probably uh, federal regulation, but um, you know we're concerned about there. Is there anything you can do? And she said, well, I got to talk to the legal department. Let's let's. I'll get back to you. So she gets back to me and she said it's it hinges on whether or not they classify those crossings. And there's I think there's two of them in particular we're talking about as public or private. Mm -hmm. Normally they make them public and then they get some federal money to help maintain them. They said since they're on private roads, we could keep them private, and then we don't have to blow a horn. Uh, but 
again, this is the issue. I think you guys had uh, been approached once before by the railroad saying, would you take over those roads we're going to build? And of course, the county said, well, why would we? So right. I'm going to back up a little bit here. So I'm not saying they're private now because two of them crossings are on county roads. You misunderstand me, Mike, and I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I'm talking about the railroads classification of them. Okay. That maybe that is not going to change where they are or what they're doing. I'm just telling you what what they're telling me. They're saying if we if we can we can they can keep them classified as private. They lose a little bit of federal money, but they're like we'll still maintain the lights and the, the bars anyway. Uh, but of course, what they want on our end, of course, now they say, well, we don't have any snow keeping equipment in this area. Can, will the county be willing to pick up the, the maintenance of the road? I know that's an issue you guys have talked about before, and I don't, I'm not trying to make you revisit something you made a decision on, but I don't think you had uh, the input from, from some of the, the members in the area. So I just want you to have all the information. The two crossings that I'm aware of, it was at 334th Street? 395th and 334th, maybe, I don't know. 395th is. is way up on the north end. Right. But that's No, it's the south end. So, that's right by Spruce Creek across. Okay. That's the three hundred. But the one they're talking is aren't they trying to put in that one that we didn't accept responsibility for? It that's more towards the north. It's end. way north. Yeah, and the, yeah. And the the reason, reason we didn't accept responsibility for it is um, it's not big enough. There was concerns about getting fire trucks in there, and yeah, I completely, I completely understand. The concern with that is just if, holding the road even. Right. I think. Right. The concern with that right. is. If we accept that, that makes them less likely to keep 334th open. They can keep it blocked more. Right, right. So, of course, mm -hmm. my only goal here is to get the parties together and see if there isn't a compromise. Is there right. some way that these couple, two, 300 residents can have a little peace and quiet? And at the same time, the county does their due diligence and makes them build it to a certain standard where it's even acceptable that you might want to do that. Okay, so, so that has to do with our engineer and secondary road. So it was it right. was under his recommendation that yep. we did not take it over and maintain it. Yeah. So my question is, or my thought process is thinking on this, if they make it private, what's our cost of maintenance? Is there a cost to us? Because now it's private and uh, so we got maintenance costs and we've got uh, track issues and approach issues. And I'm assuming that they maintain X amount of feet on either side of the tracks. So, and my second thought process is just thinking about this new road that they're putting mm -hmm. in. So that whole road that they're connecting with is a private road. So, and right. they have someone, obviously them people along that area have someone privately maintain the gravel and the snow removal of that road. Why couldn't they contract with a person to maintain and contract that little short road that they're putting in and, and give that contract to the railroad and say, it will be maintained. I'm sure they could. That's not what I'm asking you to do. I've got some residents that yeah. say, we'd like to get a quiet zone. And I'm like, well, come talk to the board. See if there's well, a compromise. Well, well, yeah. First off, the whole quiet zone scares me a little bit as far as safety issues. Do you want to talk to the Hammonds? I'm just sort of trying to get you two together. They have the and, most information. Oh, yeah. And and considering we just had right. down in Green Island, couple weeks ago, kind of some railroad track issue that was brought forward for safety concerns. Good morning. Good morning. Do you guys know Greg Hammond? I do know Greg. I do not. <laughs> okay. nice so if you just want to introduce yourself, Greg. And yeah, I'm Greg Hammond. I live um, just north of, uh, in, in a Mississippi Red subdivision, just north of that new north road they're talking about putting in that's currently unnamed. So, um, and then I grew up in Bellevue as a farm kid north of town, went to high school there and all that. So anyway, um, I know a lot of the folks and people have been complaining about all of the train and horn noise as they come through Spruce Creek and, and south of Spruce Creek. And so they do have track crossings there and they would, they started talking about maybe we could get the quiet zone from Bellevue extended out north of Bellevue and that would allow us to sleep at night, quote unquote, literally, because <laughs> it's so loud that it's waking people up. And there's almost 300 homes along that area that are impacted by it. And so I, I came to talk to John originally about, hey, could we just get this thing as a quiet zone going north? And then he looked into it and 
it looks like the negotiating point um, is that if we would, if the county would maintain that little patch of road, not the private road across the tracks, because they've already got Smith's Ferry folks do that, but the one um, that would connect up with it and then go up to the road for emergency purposes only. So those gates would be down according to their railroad supervisor all the time, unless there's a train on that side track. And, and he anticipates there being about an hour a day of a train on a side track. So this road is very seldom going to get used, but when it does get used, um, then those, those railroad bars will go up and people can exit out through there. And, and the idea is, I guess with the railroad now, they're saying, well, if you guys would maintain that little patch of gravel, um, and I if get that's it. the road they're putting in. Yeah. Right? Okay. If you guys have maintained that, we'll do the quiet zone from Bellevue out to mile marker 27, which is about a mile north of of uh, that new north road that's going in. One, so, one concern that I have with that road is, as I told you, this might only be blocking for about an hour a day. Yeah. If we rewind back to this May, where that north end where this road is going in, a lot of that road was underwater. Yeah. And then they block 334th for an hour a day. You guys literally can't get out. Yeah. You can't get in. That's part of the concern I have is A, it's hard to get things down that road. B, okay, they get down that road and it's flooded, you can't get through it. So that end to me needs to be brought up out of the floodplain. If it's truly going to be an access point, that needs to be brought up out of the floodplain. So there is access for you guys. And I appreciate the noise. I really do. I didn't like this going in there, but we don't have any choice. They're yeah. just doing it. We I could. Know. And <clears throat> we could make them build it to a standard. Well, agreement. I want you guys to have access. And if they block it an hour a day, at what point in time do they just decide it's really convenient not to unhook our we're only going to be there two hours. Why? Why do we really got to unlock? We can just send you guys to the north, and it it really limits your access. And that's more my concern point. Plus, when we got fire people saying we can't really negotiate down the the way they are building it, it's not feasible to bring our snow removal equipment down there, fire trucks down there, ambulances down there. It's not a wide road that they're building, so it's about half of what it probably should be. And again, that's us then accepting the liability and the expense yeah. to make it more accessible so our things can go down there. And if this is something they truly want, it should be brought up to a 24-foot wide street, just like our gravel road. So there can be accesses. It needs to be out of the floodplain. So in the springtime or whenever, when there's flooding going on, which we had a significant amount, and again, that's rare, yeah. but there would have been no access. Yeah, for at least an hour a day or so, or and who's going to regulate that? Those, those are my concerns. I completely, I would love to jump on this and help you guys and make it a quiet zone, but I also don't want to create other problems in doing so. You yeah, know, like yeah. access. You know, you're in your house, or, or you know, people on Smith Ferry, they're in their house. Three thirty fourth gets blocked off and it's flooding. They can't get out. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I totally get it. You know, and so. Yeah. So uh, they had told us that they're going to build that up or extend that uh, double tube that's in to the north of the 334th. Um, they also um, told us at that meeting, which was a year and a half ago, we never spoke with anybody since until we see bulldozers and stuff coming in, you know. So yeah. the point is, they said they that's never good. blocked that crossing for more than 15 minutes or they split the train. But whether that happens or not, I don't know. So my point is, I, I I am I am totally on board with the quiet zone. I don't have a problem with that because Bellevue residents lived with it for years. I don't have a problem with the quiet zone. If they say to us, if you maintain it, we will we will do this. So if you maintain it, what's the difference? Why does it have to be us? Why can't it be the private people who maintain their private road? Why can't they maintain that road also? That's it's coming question. in. It's coming into their to their private street, their road. So why don't they just maintain that little part also? So if you have a contract with somebody that says, I'm going to maintain it, is that good enough for the railroad to say, okay? Yeah, that's a good question. I hadn't really thought about that. Well, <laughs> you know, so it's it's good to maintain for, for a private individual who plows that whole road anyway. 
You know, I get it. Yeah. We we have that's and we have a guy that comes up and does. Yeah, the well, your guy's but, up there, yeah. different road. Yeah, but that, I'm sure you do. But yeah. it's is it Bobby? Guy. Bobby does, does Bobby do yours? Yeah. yeah. So, Chad and Chad Felderman also. Okay, so hey, I, to me, if we're going to accept a road coming to Smithbury, because that's what we're sure. talking about, it needs to be the same dimensions, the same classification of road as three. Well, there's going to be a recommendation from the guy next right. door. That's exactly. Right. But to me, it needs to be the same kind of gravel road leading up to the railroad tracks, like 334. Yeah. When I understand it, what they're trying to build isn't near that. Well, and it's at a grade and all that kind of stuff, and it turns and if you get a snow truck even down there, how do they turn around to get back out? Because Well, and then if you got, as I said, the arms were going to be down all the time, unless there's somebody on that side spurt, what what happens there? They blink down, they can't just yeah, yeah. magically pick up and spin and I, come I, back out, you know, type of thing. That's a great question. So let me see if I can two things here. So one, Don, I agree with what you said. And I would say if we could hold them accountable for saying, yeah, I, I guess I look at it this way. They're going to put that road in. Yeah. And and the only shot we got right now at stopping them from blowing horns all the way out. And yesterday that was one train was 16 blows to get out to that area, by the way. So if we Did could you stop... aggravate somebody by the way. <laughs> God, I hope not. I don't play very good golf. I only play about three times a year and I was out there. So maybe I hit a ball the wrong way or something. I don't know. But but they you know they blow a lot going out there. Is sure. it? And and I think um the only shot we got to getting that fixed is right now. And and it seems like that road is a leverage point with them. If not, if, if we just go and ask for a quiet zone, they're going to tell us to pound sand, right? They aren't going to listen to us. So I totally get what you're saying. And my thought would be, could we ask them to say, hey, you have to build it to our specs. Mm -hmm. And if you build it to our specs, yes, we'll maintain it. And, you know, there's, um, your guys are out plowing all the time out there. And, and what I would tell you to answer your question, I got pictures, by the way, I could show you. So I've got copies of it I'll give you guys, but it they are talking about having that road and maybe just hand the pictures out here. I'll give you two copies here. Well, yeah, I mean, we've seen their projections on it and here's, um, and so what I would say is if they could build it to spec, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're if, if they could build it to spec that you guys would approve, it's only gonna be about 70 foot road and your guys are going out there anyway. And there's a flat spot at the bottom of the hill. And I would just tell them as part of the spec, they have to build a spot that the snowplow can turn around. That's the actual hillside. So this is my little explanation in for what it's worth. And it's, um, and then there's a picture of, and I, I'll block you guys through. You guys need copies too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I still would like you Greg, to investigate the, uh, the possibility of having a contract with a private individual to maintain that. Now, I'm guessing that road's not going to be. I, I, I'm sorry. I, for some reason, I'm, I wish I don't know if Todd's still here, but I would guess that it's going to be hard for him to approve. Say, yeah, we'll take over that road because. Well, again, I want Todd to approve it, but I think if it's the county standards. And to me, there's two things. That road needs to be the county standards, the yep. county road standard, yep. and B, the elevation on the other side of the track that guarantees you guys won't be flooded in or out. And I understand you guys are north of there, so you're not affected. No, but everybody but, on that road, Smith Ferry. I have a lot of friends there. <laughs> it's so like, if they're blocking 334 and the front is flooded or whatever, you can't, they can't get in or out. Um, I am a little concerned because of railroad. I've sat on a meeting where they said if that's blocked more than 15 minutes, they're going to unhook. But they told you an hour. Now he said an hour a day. So there could be four trains, five trains, part okay. of that. But he said it would be no more than a total in 24 hour period of an hour a day. Okay. He didn't mean they'd park there for a full hour. Okay. Our, our, our issue with that when they were parked there was and they said it could be there for a day. Yeah. You know, or two. Oh, geez. But yeah. then they would split it, of course. You know, yeah. but. It's a sighting, so it's basically then another train go by and they take off. So yeah. that's what it, that's what the purpose is. But it could be a fact that if there's issues, it could be sitting there and it could be running for X amount of time. Yeah, of course, in the winter time for sure. Yeah, you know, so it, it takes an hour to split it, makes it. So that, I think that's why they said if it's going to be different. That's not what they told us. Yeah, it takes an hour to split. So then I read articles that there's no engineer on these trains anymore. Who's splitting this thing? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. Well, if we go with Mike's plan, I don't think we have any leverage to make them build it the specs. 
And again, I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm just getting people together. I'm representing everyone. Sure. Attorney. Sure. Um, That's we, the, my big thing is emergency access. And if they just put a little eight, 10 foot wide road down there, um, fire trucks, ambulances can't get down in there. If it's blocked, it's flooding. People can't get in and out because of that front end. So if they look at raising that north you know, north side, um, and this is kind of a problem of their own making because they they said to us, well, from three thirty fourth, if you come in there and you go north, some of that road floods, and that's the way it is. Yeah, but they can get in and get quite a way to their vehicle. Yeah, everybody south of there can get in just fine. Absolutely, flooding. actually, yeah. two thirds of those residents don't yeah. have a problem when it's flooding. Yep. Yeah. If they make them come in from the north, a hundred percent of those residents have a problem to get in when it's flooding. Yeah, and I, that yeah. needs to be rectified because they are creating a, a problem. And my suggestion would be to tell them if there's flooding, if that road is flooded, you can't decouple there. Yeah, it's off limits. And and I think that's so part of where my head. By the way, going, I don't think you're going to tell them anything. Well, <laughs> I'm just sorry, but to, to, we don't well, know the railroad was. To me, they there's so you. many unknowns here for yeah. us to say. Yeah, this is where the road's going. This is what it's going to look like. I mean, he's going to have drainage concerns. He's going to have all kinds of concerns about the the, the steepness for emergency oh, I, vehicles and yep. all that. We don't. Yep. We absolutely. I mean, we haven't seen no plans or drawings or a landing pad to turn around. With, yeah, if the I, county mean, is I can't over, see that. Can't be able to come down with the dump truck and turn around and get back out. Yeah, and I, I, I out. And I've spoke to the you know the fire chief and emergency personnel and. Obviously, they said we're not going to get our big truck down there to that new yeah. road. I mean, obviously, they can they can get once they get down across the tracks in that flat spot. If they make that turn correct, if, it'll, be, it'll be the same as if he lets you drive in his yard. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> but, but I will. The thing I'm the, and again I, the, the thing I can think about here is we got one shot, right? And it seems like this little road is the shot. And and I will go back and talk to the residents there and see about you know would we care. What would the guy charge us to just plow that extra section and and maybe we can try to negotiate it that way um the other side of it is if, if and i know we can't tell the railroad anything i was sitting in one of the bellevue meetings when they stood up said we have more attorneys than you go for it right so i remember that one i, I get it i used to yeah, work we with, weren't happy with the whole side spurt like, oh, I, period. there was lots of places they could have put that we, yeah and i don't even want to get off track on that one You're but right. I, I i mean this whole thing is so illogical to me to start with but Especially when we showed them double traps and triple traps south of Bell. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I get it. I, I it's the the illogic of the whole thing is to to me is some engineer at corporate yeah. was sitting there looking at a map and went, no, I want it there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they ever showed up, but anyway, that aside, we got one shot to get this, and 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 if we have a negotiating point, it sounds like or position at least where we could maybe once. <laughs> ask them for something to get it. If we could say, look, you build it to the spec that we agree to. And if there is flooding and that section of the track is flooded, you can't, you can't use that side track until such time that residents can get in and out without flooding. That seems to me like that way you're not in a deep position, right? So all your guy has to do is plow a 50 to 60 foot section, turn around and go back out. And they're out there plowing north anyway. So he'll come right off at an angle the way it should work. Just I used to snowplow. Yeah, so I know a little bit, not much. I was a pickup truck snowplow, so very different, but but I do know a little bit about it. And if and if they build that to spec and he could just kind of slide off that side and come down and dump it and spin it or push it and spin around and come back out, not too bad. Yeah. Um, but they have to build it right. And that's where your guy, you're in. I think we might have to find it easier to negotiate them to actually bring that road up because that's a one-time fix and they're done versus, oh, it's flooding. We can't well, do maybe, this. Yeah. We can't do that. That's an ongoing. Or yeah. we don't care if it's flooding because we're only here for a little bit, you know, type of thing. Um, I'd actually start for the, the, the fix the road yeah. kind of thing. I like it. You know, just. Does private plow north of that 334 too, winter? No. Ain't there no full time residents? Is it home and homeless or full time? You just four wheel drive through there. Okay. <laughs> so they just go south from 334. Okay. No, I would I would actually look into the, you know, if they could sign a contract, a private individual to clear and maintain that road. I mean, it wouldn't be much of a job for him to do. There ain't going to be traffic on it, basically. Yeah. And they may not care. I can take that to them, but, and they may just say, great. We'll start doing contracts, but just so everyone understands, if, if those are my marching orders, 
then we lose any leverage to make to make to give them our specifications and make them build a bigger road. Well, let's see what kind of answers we get before we lose. I mean, we're not losing any leverage, leverage until I, I'm all for the quiet zone part of it, but I'm not willing to at this point. I don't have enough info or even specs on this road to say. You know, no, I understand. Well, I understand to me, I think if, they, if they go with the private, if they go with the, we just get a private guy to pave the or to plow this road. Um, it's not a county road. Any problem that is derived therefore is of their own creation. And the county has no liability with them whatsoever. So if they're blocking a track and it's flooded, they can't get it out of there. They accepted that, and there is no fixing it at that point. You know, so that's that's right. what the residents right. need to understand. When the county says we, we'll we'll consider it under these circumstances, is because we have certain rules and regulations, things we have to follow because and liabilities that we'll be accepting. We're not. A, they're going. That road is about as cheap as road as you can put in. And, Call the yeah. road. Yeah, we can't do that. We can't just put in a little eight foot path and call it a two lane road. Yeah, we yeah. need to be able to have things pass. Yeah. So for us to accept it, it needs to be to if somebody puts in a subdivision out there, the roads need to be in certain specification specifications yeah. for a reason. Yeah. And so if they right. want us to really yeah. consider it. Yeah. It yeah. needs to really be in our specifications for said reasons. Yeah. So I would. I guess my question is: Could we go back? Could John and I put together a proposal back to the railroad just to see how they might respond? Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. says if you build it for these specs, and we'd have to get Todd's input, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's why I just and asked. I don't think I'm. I don't know. Is that what you want me to do, or do you want me to just ask them if, if a private uh, both see what our options are? Okay, I understand what you're saying. I'm as a negotiator that I would not recommend that. I would recommend we hit them with the proposal we want first and not the, the easy, if they can do a private grader, if we can have a private individual grade at the railroad is going to slay them, fantastic. If that will meet their terms, they'll go with that first. You'll get your quiet zone. We will, but we won't get a road. Do we want the bigger road? Do we want the county specification road? If we can negotiate that for a quiet zone and that's what we want, Maybe well, that's what we asked for. The quiet zone, if you guys go to the quiet zone and you pay a contractor to pave that little road they're putting in, they give you your quiet zone, hallelujah. If you come back later and say they're blocking the track, we can't get in, it's the, the snow, the weather, the flooding, we're no harm, no foul. We got no, you guys created this mess, we're out. Yeah. If you want us to fix it, we're going to assess your area because we warned you. Mm -hmm. These are These are things... These are concerns that we see going forth. It needs to be a wider road, like a county road. That's acceptable. We need to have access along there in case of flooding, what have you, because there's some low points, and I don't think it would take a lot. I mean, the way they're throwing money around to raise that road up and put a bigger road in is going to be about 0.1% of what they're spending to put this switch back, you know, this... Yeah thing so yeah if the county wants to be involved and i'm speaking for me i don't know if it's acceptable to you guys but to me for me to consider accepting it as county that needs to be a full-fledged county road coming down 22 24 foot wide so we have access to it um the road needs to have access i don't want to accept the responsibility of smith ferry road at all we're going to take it to the track they would still need to plow, but it needs to be yeah. raised out of the floodplain and it needs to be approved by todd yeah that way we know it's a county standard that we can do somewhere. Yeah, absolutely, Don. We have, yeah, absolutely. For, for sure. So I would agree 100%. It has, first of all, I'm going to take a recommendation from Todd, our county engineer. Yeah. Also, the other issue on that road is that if, if it is up to specs and so on and so forth, there's still an issue on the east side of them tracks of making the corner and going down the road. Yeah, I mean, you're in, in individuals' yards. I mean, I don't know how much room is there, but there's not a lot. So the problem is getting in there you can get to the track but after you get across the tracks you've got to go somewhere well, it sounds like mike's saying you you don't think the county would even if they built the road up the county specs you'd prefer the private snow plowing is that what i'm hearing well i, I would prefer that i don't really need another no. road especially up down going down in there I, not to leave them blindsided either i mean there's more than just the snow plowing that's going to go with it you're going to well, maintenance have the routine maintenance yeah. of it also so gravel coming in and yeah 
stuff like that. So the thing is, we got a gravel pit about a half mile from here. It's a good thing. We just yeah, made the road to get the gravel pit. Okay, pay so that. You is if, if the whole community is that approximately where the road's coming in? So this okay, so if you look look above you there, Greg. What they told me was Greg. Yes, sir. If you look above you. Oh, yeah, they told me that it was between these two trees. Now, maybe he meant these two trees because that looks more okay, logical. Again, but... once you get across that track, there's not a lot of room for a, a large fire truck or... Um, if you look at my picture, and it doesn't do a great job, but this area right here is all kind of dug out. But when they came through and did all their work, they did. They just kind of bulldozed everything out of there. So there's not a whole lot left down there now. And that's where I was saying when I walked. I walked down and actually looked at it, and it appeared to me as over in here. That, yeah, this looks like an older picture, but yeah. it appeared to yeah, me because this is all dug out now. So what I thought was the road's going to come kind of. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting the stretch here, but yep. it kind of comes down this way, and then we'll kind of turn back in. And what I thought was, if it's coming down this hill, they just make a turnaround spot here, which is already dug out. You just put a little gravel there in a circle. So the snow plot can come down, kind of shove it to the side here, back up, head back out, and continue on their northward journey. So currently, there are big boulders all the way to right here. This whole line. Yeah, yeah and they would have to move them. Like a retaining wall kind of thing? It's not retaining. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're 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 some rocks. Uh, yeah, they're boulders. He's he's right. But that to me, that's a twenty minute move. You know, if they've got the equipment in there, if, if we're asking them to build it, then I think that's a twenty minute move. Yeah, that's a short distance to make. Yeah, it, I'm talking. So the truth is, so they should never put it there, right? But they did, and they're going to put a road here, right? And they're going to make it emergency access, and they may build it crappily, and they may maintain it, which I doubt very well. And then I don't know what we have to go back and find them with and all that. But the, the, the truth is, there's very few win potentials in this, other than we could make it really a lot better for the 300 homes that are having to deal with this crap by get, making it a quiet zone. And these folks won't have to listen to horns blaring like I did last night, at one and then three and then five. Yeah. And, and you know, and they go all day too. But but the point is, you it, it, you can't sleep through it. There's no way. <laughs> How long have you been living there? Uh, six years now. Okay. So as of right now, they don't have any more crossings crossing the railroad track than they have for the last six years. Yep, right? mm -hmm. yep. How long have you been hearing the horns? Um, mostly the last year and a half. And oops, sorry, he took a map down. Okay. But primarily because they're doing work there now. So they're already sort of into their blow stage of the way they're going to do it. So forward. they're just warning construction workers or they're warning what? Well, yeah. in the middle of the night, there's nobody there. So yeah, I, uh, there's no more roads going across. So what are they blowing the horn for? Well, they've already designated where that road is. Mm -hmm. So they're already starting to blow there. And then they've got the 334, mm -hmm. but now they're doing a, um, so they do a warning blow, then a blow, then a warning blow, then another warning blow, then another blow. And so all of that stuff never used to happen. There used to be one warning blow to 334th and then a warning blow to 395th. And, and then they'd go through, right? Now they're doing doubles of each one. And, and then they're doing a bunch coming under the bridge, which I don't understand that. So right before their construction starts. Yeah. They start. So they've already got their map. And what I've been told by that supervisor, who's been really nice, he's been great because he told us everything. <laughs> um, but he, he sits out there every day. And so I just take run down there and talk to him and ask questions. But what he said to me is they've, they've already provided a map to the engineers that are on these trains. And so they're now instructed to make those blow sounds as they go through. So it's a warning, short, then long, then short, after, then another short, then another long, then another short, then another short, then another. They'll tell you they've been there and they're gone. Yeah, it's just, yeah, <laughs> well, pretty much. Yeah, we've already gone through, and if we haven't, you're already under the track. So, but but the point is they, they're they doing it the way that they're gonna do it, and that's pretty miserable. But if I yeah. might add, he also sure. showed us that it would be very simple for the railroad corporation to Say this is a quiet zone. Like all they have to yeah. do is indicate from here to here is a quiet zone, yeah. and then it becomes a quiet zone. 
And if we just extend it out of Bellevue, he said that's even easier because now they've got their slow zone that they go through. Mm -hmm. And instead of ramping back up to speed for a mile and then coming back down to the quiet zone, they just extend that out. He said, that's an easy yes from the railroad. He said, I've been with the railroad for 30 years and worked with a bunch of different people on projects. And he said, an easy yes is to get that done. And he said, you got leverage with this road. Take advantage of it. Well, okay, I, I I'm all aboard with the quiet zone. I really am. But again, it's going to have to. You're going to have to talk to the engineer. Yeah. It it has to be approved by them, you know, acceptable to their standards. And like say, I'm quoting the best I know what standards might be. Yeah. When you cross the tracks down in the Smithbury Road, what kind of landing pad needs to be there for people to make corners and all that kind of stuff, and what that does to the road, elevating it out. Because again, they're creating problems for me. Access when you know if it's flooding. If they don't raise that road, people are locked in and out of there. You know, snow removal. If it's if they want the county to play, we have rules we have to play by by federal law, state law, all that stuff. Accessibility, road standards. That's why we build the roads the way we do. Um, it could, needs to be to that. Could they, Don, do the? It has to be to spec just down to the track because it's already established across the track, right? right? I, I, could, we, I, I, could we say the county is just going to keep, the county will take that part of it, but the private citizens still have the right. responsibility to manage that across the track? Is it the, the nice part of that for the people that live there is part of their yard doesn't go away too, because there's not a lot of yard space to start. No, I, I just want the county road down to the track with a turnaround. Yeah. There. Once yeah. you cross the track, that will be privately maintained. Yes. But when you cross the track, I want to make sure that the residents that have never had access issues flooding or otherwise, yep. don't all of a sudden get flooded out of their property because the road floods. And that's where I was thinking, since we do have a little leverage, we just add to the request. It has to be built to our specs down to the track. And if there is flooding, you can't block Smith's Ferry Road. You just can't. If you can't way, use I, that side you track. You could approach it that way and build it to specs anyway. Well, you would say you either can't block or just bring this up. Whether it's maintained yeah. privately or not, we want to build the specs. So in, down the road, we may take over ownership or maintenance of it, whatever, but it still should be this built to specs either way. Yeah. You know, I mean, we if if they have no uh, EMS protection or fire protection for X amount of time, if the road is if 334th is blocked, then, you know. Well, I think that's the win of the county having it. Because now you do have EMS capability. If if we just say we'll make it a private road and make it eight or twelve feet or whatever it is, you know, we could try to make it wide enough for the EMS. I, I don't know. You know, we could get the railroad to maybe build it to a spec where we could at least get EMS up in and out of there and make it private where we pay for it. Again, yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot of input from our engineer on. Yeah, yeah I think like, your next stop would be talk to Todd. Yeah, yeah. what would be more acceptable for him because. It might not be the width of the road. It might be the grade of the road. Yeah. You know, type yeah, of thing. Yeah, I'm know. not a, yeah. I'm, so that's that would be a conversation I, I think would be about. Thank you. Slope, yeah, what because the, that was kind of a pretty hard, no, we don't want that. He had a kind of a long list of <laughs> sure. why. I know, I know if I were to issues, I feel the same way. So I get it. <laughs> I get it. We, we, don't, we don't want to get to it, but we don't want to create more problems. No, I totally get it. I just, like I said, we got one shot. Because they're going to do it anyway, right? And they're either going to build a crappy road that we're all going to deal with, um, and and then have trouble getting EMS in and out of there. And if they have a thing, and so we got a shot to kind of negotiate this to a better position for us in a lot of ways, which is build it to spec. And you can't if it's flooded over there, you can't have a sidetrack car um, in blocking Smiths Ferry, and give it a shot. And all we're asking for in response to that is quiet zone. Okay. It seems to me if we could get that, Todd could spec it out and say, this is the way I want it. Mm -hmm. You guys I think go. That's build. your next step. Yep. Okay. Sorry. I, I get your it. quiet zone too, but I also worry about the safety part of the quiet zones. Well, I, 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 if you you're know, down there, I, there is no way you can't hear them coming with those diesels anymore. I mean, you could sit in your car with your radio blasting and, and you wouldn't miss them. They're, they're making enough noise that, and, and there's so much reflection down there in sound with a rock. It's, I, I hear them from Bellevue. I mean, I can hear them as soon as they come out of Bellevue. So, there's my card if you want to. Okay. If you want to give me a call. That'd be great. Thank you. Well, well, thank you, folks. Thank you. Um, yeah, good luck. I just like, get us some more information. And yeah, we're I, we're on board with the Clyde Zone thing. It's just how we do it. Best process. Okay.
I know there's a lot of strong feelings, so I appreciate you you giving them that hearing. Yeah, yeah. thank you. No problem, bro. And who knows? Good luck. Maybe we can work something out that we like and the railroad likes. Yeah, maybe. That would be, yeah, awesome. that would be awesome. That would be great. That's a compromise. That's a good deal. <laughs> All right, thanks. I like it. Thanks, Jack. I mean, that's, that's I know, this ferry up there is part of our community. You guys are part of our community, and we well, appreciate that. You know, thank you. There's obviously some tax incentive up there for us. So. Uh, we uh, we were uh, yeah we were kind of bummed when they came through and plowed all those trees yeah. out. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you Andrew. All right, so um, is there any visitors or citizens that would like to approach the board this morning? Don't see any or hear any. Uh, have you had any contact with Elizabeth? Is that right? Have you had talked to Elizabeth at all? Is she still looking to be here or is this is her she... request? So ready? They're ready for you. Thanks. Right down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank the trash was there before you would put people at home. Yeah. Yeah. The girls are on that one top. Just one of our people train accident just two days ago. Yeah. Well. Right. Right. Good morning. So we are joined here by Elizabeth Townsend, our Jackson County Health Administrator. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. All right. So it was kind of a department update. Um, so we had our board health meeting two weeks ago. So this is the same report that I give them. And then some additional updates just from the meeting. Um, I see the report online. Was it in our books too? It is. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys want me to. Oh, I got it. These, you still want me to come and do these? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, keep in contact. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I like reporting to you. Just okay. So for Grandson County's, um, so we conducted our first PFOS test. Um, that's a test for the Forever Chemical. Um, it's approved for through the DNR for our water grant. So we conducted one of those, they're an expensive test, they're like six to $700. So um, the reason we qualified for that is because we, um, one of the public water supplies over there tested positive for PFAS over in Bellevue. So um, that's what makes it qualifying. So that opens the door for other qualifying wells to be tested for that as well. Still waiting on the results for it. Um, it's kind of a complex test where you have to test like the air and the water. It takes some time to do. It, you can't wear like any lotion or anything like that because um, it can easily be contaminated. But so I, was, I was excited to do that. Um, we also had some changes um, that were brought forward to us um, for the grant this year. They're just being more flexible on what is allowable for expenditures. Um, so that's kind of exciting. It kind of opens up, you know, training allowabilities and different things like that. Um, and so far this year, we have roughly, and this is the grant year, so that started July 1. We did uh, roughly 50 bacteria nitrate tests and 48 arsenic tests. It's been kind of a slow time, but it will kind of pick up this fall. And then an iris update. Um, so the Dressler Water Project, um, basically what they're waiting for, they're, they're planning on getting going with it this year, um, but probably they're just gonna, they're ordering supplies. And my thought is they're probably gonna order everything and then start it in the spring. Um, 
the company that was hired on to do that project, they're finishing up another project um, here in Iowa. And then they'll, when they're done with that, they'll move over to the project and we'll address theirs. Okay, I thought they said they were going to put some mains. They said they would start getting some mains in yet this late fall. Right. And so that, yeah. So we don't know for sure, so, but it's kind of, yeah. Like um, homes probably won't see anything until spring. Yeah. Right. They, they're also, hoping to have it in, but I don't know if they will. They also <laughs> had a hold up because this is an all USA project and one of the parts is no longer available right. through a USA manufacturer. So they had to get special exception yeah. for the main hookup from Bellevue to them. Yeah. So my guess is they probably won't get anything in the ground this year. They may. That's what they're hoping for. But We'll see. Um, okay, and then the Leisure Lake sewer system. So I was working with Iris and the DNR to determine some, um, how to go about addressing some of the um, issues, sewer issues that we're having over at Leisure Lake. Not that there's issues with the sewer, but there's things that um, people aren't following over there. So the question is, who's supposed to monitor that? Um, <laughs> you know, how do we address all these things? So after meeting with the DNR, they actually said that the Board of Health and myself are not supposed to be, I guess, dealing with any of these public sewer systems. So it should actually fall back on to IRIS um, and they have a sewer operator as well. I do know that when Frank was the um, sanitarian, he did a lot of, he said he was over there like a third of his time trying to police everything. Um, but basically at this point, I'm gonna be having a meeting with the, <clears throat> excuse me, the DNR to determine how, how we can work with IRIS and our department to make sure that things are in compliance over there. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, we're, we're having an issue in, in the county where there is some seasonal cabins that are going up um, or were destroyed when we had the flooding back in the spring and they're wanting to rebuild. Um, most of these cabins had outhouses that are illegal um, or they have nothing at all. So I'm working with the DNR on how to address this issue. Some of it's core land, some of it's not. Um, so it really comes down to kind of the county on how we want to handle these properties. Um, if we're going to, between my office and the zoning office, if we're going to allow people to build on a property where they can't put a septic system. Some of these are out on islands where I can't even get out there. So I don't know if we need to buy a boat so I can go out and... <laughs> It might have problems. <laughs> <in it. laughs> My budget, maybe we can buy like a cheap one and kayak. Yeah, because um, there's a lot of them, and as I get on Beacon, I, I know that the assessor's office was able to get in and get some photographs of some of them, and you know I can see things like water, homemade water tanks that are set up outside, so we know they're running water in to to the buildings, and we know there's probably some sort of fixtures in there that they're using. Um, so working with the DNR on how to address this, and I think it's going to come down to this board and the health board to try to put something in place maybe on how to deal with these moving forward, um, cause we definitely don't want, you know, wastewater that's not being treated. No, and, and I, it's a, I really appreciate the part that the DNR is involved in it, that, um, that they're going to have their standards to Right. So, well, I'm really looking for their guidance, you know, because I don't, we hate to tell people in the county, no, you can't build. We obviously want people to come in and build. We want, we want that. And we want people to enjoy living on the river and have a cabin and this and that. But um, how do we make it so that it's something that we can monitor if they're not going to have fixtures in there? I mean, we don't want them to build something and say they're not you know, they're there one day a year or a couple weekends a year, and then they put something in later on and then we don't know about it. So how do we monitor? I think a boat would be an excellent idea. <laughs> um, so I do well, think- we got drones, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, so I have to, so I would actually, um, you know, come down to 
an inspection of the interior of the the buildings to make obviously sure. they would well maybe not obviously but they would think they'd know they'd have to be up to standards um in a, in a facility for waste material you know Right. Or do we deem things not buildable? Do we deem a site yeah, not buildable you know, there if you they go. can't get, you know, a septic tank? Or, you know, some of these properties might be able to get one out there by boat, but then how do they get it pumped? And I have heard of like pumper boats out there, you know, and maybe it's at the homeowner's expense, you know, that they have a pumper boat from, you know, 100, 200 miles down the river come up and pump their septic and they have to give us the receipts. So is this not core property then either? It's, 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 uh... So we have a few of them that are on core property and the core is involved. Um, and then there's a few of them that are not. And they're all kind of right around each other. They're all down in the mm -hmm. Cibula area. Sure, sure not core property. So one of them's on an island. Two of them are on an island and then right along the river once you go past that kind of it's not a true island, but it's something that you can't get to except it's boat, boat access only. So the other ones are the same way. It was property that was purchased from the railroad. Um, you can't get there except for to get on a boat, go over there and walk up over the railroad tracks up to the property. So just trying to figure out how to address these. And I think, like I said, it's going to come down to county. Yeah, we certainly appreciate that. And again, I'm going to stress the uh, DNR standards and, and their recommendations, I suppose. Yes. What's the core standards for those that are out there on the core islands? So oddly enough, it doesn't seem like they have a lot of standards. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, they're not in the housing business, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So the core, um, basically, they they don't necessarily, if we're going to require it. Are these then, north of Sibula or are these? Uh... So um, can you make it smaller? Um, no. Okay. So you're going to go north. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So keep going, or it's keep going, keep going. So it's this whole thing right here. Keep going. Um. Keep going down. Keep going. Okay. So they're right up around here. There's like three little cabins that were washed out. They want to rebuild. Here's one of them. Over here. Mm -hmm. Um. And they had an outhouse. And apparently the owner had called the core and said that the county said they didn't have to have any septic system. So that came back to me and it went to the DNR and I'm, no, you have to have something. I had one conversation with the owner of that one. Um, but then as you scroll over to the west, if you make it smaller, a uh, lot smaller. So there's the core, property but then over to the east or to the west um northwest there's some more cabins up along that way and we have no way to get over you know yeah so, so they're going up this way wow yeah so they're all along there and some of them were I'm like here's one right here go back there right there three so there's three little how do you get to them you have to either treacherously climb through another property and down a cliff and trees, or you can take a boat and you can climb up over the tracks. Some of those cabins the one is really nice. <laughs> um, yeah. So there's no physical road going to them. There is not. And... The one, they must have been hauling stuff forever to make it really nice. Um, I, I want to ask my assessor how he's getting back there. Yeah. Probably so, so what we're trying to determine is so we don't have seasonal like dwelling. We don't have anything that says, oh, this is seasonal or it's not seasonal. There's really no way to determine if something's seasonal or not or monitor that. Um so, you know, we've kind of decided, oh, we're, are we going to allow somebody to carry in a five gallon bucket and use that and then bring it back with them? 
Um, but as long as they don't have fixtures in there and they're not running water inside, it's not an issue. So that's what we're really trying to find out. But one of, this is the really nice one. So some of those are, there new things for like some of these tiny homes and stuff that they take around and they got like incinerator box kind of thing? Yeah, so they will have to have something like, okay, so look, see the, right here. Uh-huh. Catching the rainwater. That's so the that, they're plant. catching water and... I don't know if there's some way that they're running that into the house, but that's a pretty nice house to not have any running water of some kind it's in there. Just the roots, you too. I mean, these people might live there year round. I have no idea. So I need to get out. I need to get out there. <laughs> what? <laughs> if they live there year round under those conditions, they don't want anybody to live there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the really nice one, and there's another there's another one that wants to build that's just south of that because they're like, well, our neighbor, the neighbor in property is a really nice place, and we want to build the same kind of thing. Well, we sure appreciate the update on that, and we look forward to how that turns out. Yeah. So we're meeting. I'm meeting with the DNR and the Corps this week. We've already had started discussion and this and that, but it's. Ultimately, I think you're meeting see, not on site. No, but I do think that I they think are going to get Lori and I. Somebody from the DNR is going to get Lori and I a little cruise out there so that keep, we can kind of keep me posted. Right? Yeah. Do you, do you want to go for a boat ride? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> um, it's it's water. But like I said, it's going to come down to the county with the zoning and the health to decide how we want to deal with these. And I don't think that any permits are going to be issued until it comes down to what this board and um, the board of health wants to do. And if we want to determine if something is buildable or not. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and then just some numbers for you. Year to date, septic permits, we've got 34. We've got 19 well permits. We've got one geothermal permit. Um, we've got seven well rehabilitations. We had 28 animal bite cases. Um, one time of transfer inspection that I completed. I thought that I'd be getting more, but I don't have a pumper truck, so it kind of limits things. Um, 37 time of transfer reports and two binding agreements for future installation. Oh, she wants a truck in. No. Yes, truck and a boat and one of those things to pull the soil out. The soil testing, I will say, has been going well. Like there's a, we've had a lot of contractors. Like the boring, yeah. Yeah. So I mean they're they're four hundred dollars a trench. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I think possibly next year we might charge a little bit more. Um, just because, well, so, too much. so I think, so because otherwise we're being too competitive by being, I didn't think people would pay for this, <laughs> but they, they want the county to do it. So, yeah. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Thank you. All right, that's Appreciate the report and, uh, yeah, yeah, like Don said, keep up the good work and you. looks like you got things There's on track question. anyway. I might put one out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we have some visitors here. Would uh, would you to kindly yield your time? Absolutely. Thank you, uh, Jane. I'm not. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm not really trying good. to. Uh, yeah, and I'm sorry, Ron L is with today. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to destroy your last name. I'll just let you just oh, okay. introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jane Grappa. I'm the CEO of KPAP, and I'm fortunate to have Ron L. Clark with me this morning, our local uh, county coordinator. So uh, we're here to talk about our lease that we have with you, but we also would like to share some uh, highlights of VCAP with the services that we provided for you in the lead here as well. So uh, we served 1,887 people living in 961 households. And I'll give you a copy of this handout as well, too. Uh, between October 1st of 2022 and September 24th of this year. That's a 2% increase in uh, services from the previous year. 50, 533 households, or 55% of those live in absolute poverty. They have a household income of the uh, median income wage, less than the median income wage. 
which is an estimate of uh, uh, us uh, determining uh, needs within the county. In uh, 2022, we gave out a record number, a record high number of assistance to clients in your county. That was because we had some American Rescue ARPA plans. We had uh, quite a bit of water funding and uh, various pandemic relief issues. So it, when you look at this chart, you're going to see that we actually distributed less cash assistance or uh, financial assistance to uh clients in your county, but we served more clients this past year. In our affordable housing initiative, we served uh, 1,706 individuals in 828 households. We distributed uh, 435,000 plus dollars in low income heating assistance. We repaired or replaced seven uh, furnaces in households within the county during that year. And we completed four weatherization projects. And the weatherization projects actually put uh, energy efficiency measures in the home, such as insulation, uh, we tighten up holes, and also replace furnaces, hot water heaters, and that type of thing to reduce energy, energy consumption in the home. And that resulted in uh, a use of 25% less energy than those households that we did serve. We also stabilized uh, two families by providing uh, housing services, homeless housing services to them. Uh, we also provided case management, rent, and utility assistance to those folks and are continually looking for uh, households to serve, including veterans and non-veterans, with veterans being the primary focus. And Ronnell does a fabulous job of working with those families within the county. In our local assistance, we provided 150 households with a variety of basic needs. Uh, 103 of those households received some sort of rent assistance, emergency shelter, or rent reimbursement supplements. And 78 uh, households or families in the county were part of our VITA program, which is the income tax uh, program where we work with them to get their taxes figured and filed. And generally it results in an earned income uh, credit refund coming back to that household. We also gave 28 households bus passes, gas cards, or provided resources for vehicle repairs. We provided 11 households with food assistance and five households were uh, supplied with hygiene programs. We also have 16 Head Start slots in uh, Jackson County, and we serve those at the facility that we're gonna talk about today. We have a considered a part year program because it doesn't run through the summer. Although <clears throat> we do some extended daycare there and we use not only Head Start funds, but the local empowerment funds from the county as well too, to provide that. And the last thing I want to share with you about our services is we have 19 members that work in Jackson County, and that is an annual payroll at this point of about $300,000 that goes back into the community. So any questions on that? Well, it's not that I, mm -hmm. I had a chance to <laughs> dissect it, it but <laughs> it, there's a lot of numbers got thrown around there, but yeah, uh, yeah it sounds uh, substantial. I, you know, we are thrilled to be serving uh, Jackson County, as you know. I think, Mike, you were involved in the transition from Operation New View to HACAP. I mean, you were at the tw 2018. Yeah, I partner. just don't have I enough information right. that I retained, yeah. I guess, if, if I did. And I remember, I know well, Jack, that's okay. was, Jack, Jack was, was involved. Jack was extremely involved. He was a member of the Transition Committee and Executive Committee and also a board member for Operation New View. But we've been serving, HACAP has been serving the area since uh, 2000, uh, 2020, it's not 2000, 2020. Uh, <laughs> October 1st of 2020, we worked with Operation New View for several months prior to that, before the transition did take place. We have expanded the level of services that are provided in the community since we've been part of HACAP. Uh, Certainly, Operation New View was a great community action agency, but we have a wider breadth of services because of uh, we're a larger organization than what Operation New View had. So we've been able to provide more comprehensive services and look forward to continuing to grow the services that we provide in the county as well. 
Yeah, because I guess you know we we just don't hear a lot about right, it. Right, right. We mm -hmm. just don't, mm -hmm. and you know the. I admit we need. I sit down and look over these numbers. That's a lot of a lot of communicating with you. So, because there's a yeah, I mean, no offense, there's a lot of people that have no clue. You say Operation New View, they get it. You say Hey Cap, and yeah, it's been a it's been a challenging transition to um, you know I'll go on the radio a couple times of the year. Um, we are when we are stuck in our phrases here in our community, we tend to call things the same thing for years after the the change has mm -hmm. taken place. Um, but I do agree. You know, I try to get out to a lot of public events um, and partnering with different organizations that we work with. Right. Um, so I want to point out just some of the things that we have done to improve access to families that we're serving. So one of the gaps in our community um, is dental care for low-income families. And so in the last few years, we really made a good partnership with Crescent Community Health Center out of Dubuque, which has a dental clinic. Um, I'm on their board now. And so we're improving access to quality health care for lower-income families, which wouldn't have that access. Um, a lot of our veterans will be going to Crescent as well. Um, Crescent is a nonprofit organization that helps to provide um, access and resources to people um, for brain health, uh, physical health, and also dental health. Now they have a prescription assistance program too. So that's a really good partnership. Um, everything goes by folks' income there. So you, if you don't have access to health insurance, um, they all fill that gap for you. Um, or if you're underinsured. We also, you know, with our Head Start program, a couple of women, <laughs> right at the beginning of the pandemic, we started a partnership with the Jackson County Succeeding Together um, organization, which is, is relatively new and up and coming. And we started to ask our Head Start parents if they wanted to partner um, with the Ruby Payne Bridges Out of Poverty program. Um, which helps them to establish just different relationships within the community and broaden their horizons a little bit. A lot of you know Brian and Jane Schmidt um, and Sue Gossman. Um, they're a part of this. Brian and Jane teach the class. And we had 10 parents um, that entered that class who um, are just incredible human beings. Um, one of those, one of those couples were able to. Um, because they took this class, they were able to rebuild their credit and they just purchased a house. Mm -hmm. Two years later, um, both of them are working full-time jobs where they were working part-time jobs before. And that was because of the partnerships that they developed throughout the class. Um, and also just helping them to understand how to rebuild credit. And so I think that this is something that we wanna continue in our community. It's helping our community grow. Um, while the numbers for the class are 10 and under, um, you know, 10 participants and under, that's 10 lives, you know, and households that were changing um, gradually. But you're controlling. affecting a, a lot it's more a than huge 10. Impact. Yeah. It, it is. And I love this, this program because it really um, spends a lot of quality time with families and building relationships with people like you who have been very successful in your lives. And so we'll probably call upon one of you to come to one of the classes. It's going to begin in January. We really want you to be able to come and talk about your experience, your life experiences, your successes, and your mistakes, um, how you overcame those mistakes, and how you really focused on what can I do to help improve our community. Um, people are volunteering now that went in this class who had never felt comfortable in volunteering before. And as you know, in our community, it takes a village <laughs> to grow us. Mm -hmm. And we are small, but we are mighty. And I'm just so incredibly proud. Our Head Start parents, you know, they're at 100% of the area, media, area median poverty level. They're living in extreme poverty. And for them to break barriers and grow out of that has just been incredibly impressive. Um, and we can't do that alone. Um, so I would love to see one or all of you come and have lunch with our kids, get engaged with our families, um, come and read to them. That's how we, that's how we help these families uh, grow and thrive. 
Uh, we also provided a little disaster assistance. We talked about the flooding. <laughs> and I forgot about the water I forgot. disasters. Yeah, um, that's a huge program for low-income families and low-income households. I think I personally helped um, a caseload of eight families um, in Bellevue, Miles, Sabula, and Green Island who, who dealt with flooding and high winds. <laughs> I mean, that grant helps to provide about $5,000 of gap coverage. So it helps to pay if they have homeowner's insurance, it will pay their deductible so they can stretch their dollars um, because our lower, lower income families just don't have those kind of resources sometimes. So we appreciate um, everything you do to help yes, us. We do. You know, I mean, it's all really good information here that uh, be honest with you that we don't know about. Yeah. I mean, we don't. We'll we do just, a better we just, job. Yeah, we'll do a better job uh, making sure you are aware of it. Well, you know, I mean, I mean, again, Mary, you can have this too if you want that. <laughs> um, okay. It's, yes, we've got another uh, one too. it's like uh, that's an extra one, actually. So yeah, it's like we, you know, especially with two new board members. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'll be honest, great. I knew very little. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I interacted with Ronell on a couple different occasions, yeah. but yeah. it's not. Yeah, and, yeah, and it's not often enough to. Yeah. interact and mm -hmm. like you said invite us down and mm -hmm. i mean i've stopped down there a few times too but yeah. again and let you think about it you drive by and you yeah you know but uh yeah. but certainly do appreciate that and, and the information and to get the word out there like that to people that that are in need mm -hmm. is the biggest challenge maybe I, I don't know it's um incredible our families uh our networks for one another yeah. if they've had a yeah. success um in in reaching and accessing our services they spread that to their friends in the community but it's really really important to have folks um, who maybe are above that need knowing about us because you're working with families in the communities um, especially, you know, through the hospital, um, there's a lot of people um, who need us that don't know about us. I completely agree with you. Yeah. Generally, with community action agencies, the people that know you are the people that come to you for service. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they're uh, oftentimes very well versed in the services we provide, but they're uh, kind of a silent population within when it comes to sharing that information. In the community. So I, I guess with that being said, too, I, I see it as not only a county thing. Mm -hmm. I, I see it as a municipality, you know, mm -hmm. a covenant yes. involved. Mm -hmm. So I think they know very little, too, to be honest. I, I <laughs> so, actually work with the, the local municipal um, because we provide funding to them. Right. So they're our greatest source of referral. If a person is struggling to pay their bills, if they're struggling to um if they're facing a shutoff notice, they're calling, they're referring people over to us. We have partnerships and contracts with every single municipal mm -hmm. utility company. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Um, so yeah, it is It is a really good thing. Yeah. Um, and we're grateful for those partnerships Absolutely. and especially our I mean, space. You don't, you don't expect anybody to live in poverty, but it's, it's here. It and is. It's, yeah. it's in our county. And mm -hmm. some of the areas I've seen just even recently, you know, I had a family member who lost their spouse. Mm -hmm. Well, now mm -hmm. being only one income, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it changes yeah, everything. Definitely puts you in a whole different mm -hmm. ballpark mm -hmm. of where you're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it certainly yeah. does. And we're serving um, a tremendous amount of our population and our senior citizens um, who have lost their spouse and they just are surviving on one income and then uh, disabled individuals. That's a large part of our population, along with um, hardworking low income families. Yeah, I, I like the interaction, you know, with the with the with like with the city of Macomb also, that mm -hmm, you can, mm -hmm, and that yeah. inform them of what's all going on. I mean, it's right here in town. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. so uh, did we talk lease? Uh, we're fine with the terms of the lease. It, I mean, we're... okay. So I guess you know, again, two new supervisors and me being out mm -hmm. of touch a little bit. So I, I guess I don't know how the numbers ever come about, or what the standards are, or what's normal. Or what's not normal, or you know, is there a percentage increase every year? I, you know, I did a couple of these uh, yeah. percentages, and I mean, you're looking at a two percent or slightly over two percent, maybe. Yeah, I think you know, this the lease when we uh took over and became involved was the build off of the lease that was currently in place with Operation New View. For well, that's a long time before any of us, so I, uh, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that's the point that, that we, we don't know how it come about. Or if it's a if it's normal in industry or what is yeah, in the industry we, or we would consider it you know uh, because we own and lease facilities both 
we would consider it to be standard for the um, property that we're leasing from you. Did you I hear you say you want to buy the property? Did I hear you say that? I know, no. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to sell it? <laughs> no, you know, I consider anything. <laughs> I mean, we're not in the market to buy it right now, but if at some point you are so, about selling it, it, the way I look, this was a three year, is that correct? Right. I, yeah. I read it, I yeah. got notes on a different one, but I don't have that with me. Three, it was a three year lease that we, uh, put into effect back in October 2020. And there is an increase. It looks like a. So again, I, I don't know how the in-kind um, portion of it come about, uh, how that was figured or how that normally is done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the increase, of, did you do some numbers there, Don? I think I, when I did them, it was like a little over 2%. Yeah, I believe it was like 2.2%, yeah, okay. something like that. The uh, Our Head Start program has to have local match from uh, local communities for every federal dollar we so you pay. the in-kind as, yeah, as, yeah, as the local match. And so that was uh, in place previously, and it just carried over to NECAP because uh, we uh, assumed operation of the Head Start program as well, too. Okay. And we traditionally in our community have... Um, have supported this this service through in kind. It, it might not be a competitive rate, but when you look at the services it would provide to the population of uh, folks um, that wouldn't normally be assisted in this way, it's a um, it's a good investment for our community. Okay, so I guess Jane, are you looking at another three year term? Is that what you're looking? We, we would be interested. Okay, in three and do you have any kind of percentage or numbers in the back of your mind? I, think we do. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing that was here, like a two point two. Okay, so um, we all. Or if that... you think it needs to be greater, I mean, we certainly will. I got it. This last one was a two point nine percent increase. So I guess. I, I guess we're looking at everything else also with the cost sure. of everything mm -hmm. and inflation, mm -hmm. how it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're looking at our side of it too. Mm -hmm. it is is a 5% out of line? No. According I mean, to where well, you're at? Certainly we would, we would need to pay that because we don't, we need the facility to provide services in our Head Start program. No, but I'm not bending anybody's arm here. I, yeah. I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> what if we met halfway and did a four? It's up for discussion. <laughs> Is it a 4% increase in the leaf? Every year, I mean, annually, yeah, you're talking, yeah. yeah. An annual 4%. Are we changing the in kind amount, or is it staying 16.2? Well, did the, it does the, like it stayed at yeah, 16 it, it stayed stable. Yeah, <clears throat> it stayed stable. And we've just increased what we've paid. And it's not substantial. But. Right. And we have made some improvements to the facility as well, too, over the past. Yeah, year. and that's, yeah. you know, spelled out in our lease, I suppose, pretty much. We got some funding. We replaced the I mean, I know. And we, uh, we should probably. The bathrooms. Yeah, we should probably read it over, make sure that, again, we, we went to our county facility, come of our county facilities, and kind of pretty much detailed each item to say if mm -hmm. it's 50-50 mm -hmm. or if it's. 100%, 100%. Basically, I would say that the structure and, and the, the components of the building is our baby and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the usage, whatever. Maybe. Well, and we we did go ahead. We uh, wanted to make some improvements. And this, I think we worked with Jack and your facilities person on to get new floor covering in the facility that we paid for. We also did renovations on the kitchen. And we the had kitchen. some grant. We got some grant for We had a grant for that when we did the new flooring and took the no. Yeah. Your Head Start program at the time, or the Head Start program, which was operated uh, not by Operation New View, by, but by Community Development Institute, they had some federal funds that they thought they could use to replace the floor covering, but it didn't uh, ever work out. Okay. The federal funds were reassigned. So we we made it a priority to replace the board coverings. You know, and we talked here a week ago briefly a little bit, sure. and I asked you to look it over. Was there anything in particular that you've seen in there that you wanted? Yeah, yeah. 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 no, I, I mean, I read it over too. 
I guess, you know, other than have legal counsel to right. say, yeah, everything looks good. I asked our facilities department and our CFO if they had any concerns and they did not. We did also add a security system. Um, so it's a buzzer system to get in and out. So that's an improvement as well that um, the pay cap made that I can remember. <clears throat> I guess uh, my initial thought was was five, but I, you know, again, I'm negotiating. If you want five, we'll do five. Well, I'm not. Like I said, I'm not strong arming anybody here, and it's not a lot of money. But it seems the way the inflation rates and everything is sure. going, mm -hmm. it's still. I mean, if we had nine percent inflation, five is almost yeah. half of that. So mm -hmm. I guess I don't know. I'm looking at it the right way. We would Input be put here from anybody else. I think that's. I mean, minor fair. even that we would have to do would be well over that increase. Yeah. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah. Sure. So what what's in the kitchen? Do you have a, a dishwasher? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we put in a new dishwasher, refrigerator. That's all yours. Yeah. It doesn't specifically say here. I mean, I just want to make sure because yeah. we have another situation mm -hmm. in another facility. Mm -hmm. and that's 100% on you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do we need to spell that out? Um, we have with our other facilities, yeah. I mean, who's who's responsible? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a 50 50 with our equipment, if you say. Well, that's what I'm saying. Wash, I mean, I guess I'm thinking dishwasher, stove, refrigerator. Yeah, yeah we've replaced all of those mm -hmm. things. And I, I think we have done some work on cabinets or are going to be doing yes, some work that's on in, yeah. that's cabinets in as well, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I think you want to spell that out just so that if this lease mm -hmm. was broken. And you walked out with it. There wasn't an issue. Well, we going... have to leave the cabinets because right. they, would, they be, would be a yeah. fixture. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah. your stove and refrigerator, yeah. if you wanted to take them, then you know, yeah. I think so we want that. Building. Yeah, so we can we consider this per, uh, permanent a permanent part of the property, right? Because, because they're they, not a fix. Right. Right. I mean, so it'd be like a house. Right. You have the option of yeah. if you want to leave them or take them. With your property, so I think yeah, I think it'd be easy enough to spell out uh, if we did a care facility somewhat. Uh, yeah, well, let's. Uh, so, is it uh, feasible to say for the next month or two we operate yeah, where we are? are what we can until, right until yeah, we can, until we get it worked out. Work, yeah. Get the wording and the percentages in there, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there go. Well, you know, again, being new on the board, times are tough. All that kind of stuff. I, I appreciate the five percent, but the amount of work you guys do for our community and the fact that you are proactive in fixing and repairing and doing stuff, it I I guess I'd be in favor of you know four percent or something just because you know again we're not talking huge what huge no, fees we're or anything not like that. But like, again, I would like to reward people that are more proactive than some of our other yeah, and I don't have a problem with that. I, I just said the way the inflation works. Yeah, I get that completely, but again. Um, they've been very proactive in doing some stuff today. Yeah. So we'll like work that we can do to help. Either or it's not a yeah. You guys work it. through it. What you want? Let us know. We'll go ahead and pay what the uh. I, this is a third year of the contract, so our current uh, yeah. amount right now until we get it. Yeah. Settled. How does that feel? Very good. Thank you for your support. We yeah. do appreciate it. Well, we can't do this by ourselves. Again, so well, thanks for coming down. I know I didn't have you on the road, but uh, uh, appreciate it. I love getting out. Yeah, just fill us in a little bit again. Uh, Ronald, don't be afraid to let us know when something's going on. If we got time to talk to one of us or all of us, or you know, think yeah, people, of all of us. Say that again. Everybody who knows that. He's been he's done an amazing job. He's been he's done an amazing job. He doesn't yeah. hear that very well. You know, I just tell him a lot. He's it's, great it's, to work with through the transition yeah. as well, too, when we yeah. were getting the floor covering replaced yeah. and getting the and we appreciate that you know yeah. we like to hear yeah. that too so yeah. um, you, know, time, you know anytime there's a question or something we call upon him mm -hmm. and he he responds yeah, very, the team has been great we're very appreciative of our so, partnership and hopefully we'll make sure to pass that on to you because yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. It's, a good job. it's good to hear good things. You know, a lot of people yeah. only report bad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's usually no, no, no. when you hear this. Yeah. 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 Well, and we so appreciate yeah. you. And please yeah. stop by anytime. You're that's welcome. So anytime. Yeah. yeah, to come and visit. Yeah. And that's what yeah. the kids love to see. Um, Again, yeah, we forget unless people. we get special yeah. invites yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Something big yeah. going on. Yeah. Please let Luann know and she'll yeah. forward it. Yeah. I'll just say, I have a similar agenda. Yeah. No. She is amazing. Yeah. I have to put a plug in for Luann. And in the transition period and in getting meetings set up, she's been fabulous to work yeah. with. We have been, yeah. I feel very fortunate to have her. Great. Going to get out the door yeah. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for yeah, all the leaders. Leaders. Great. 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 Everybody's involved. Great. Well, thank you for coming and uh, have a safe yes. trip. Yeah. All right. We'll get everybody all pumped up here and blown up. And <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, again, Luann, Lisa, okay. So, um, John, sure. we're willing to stick you right in there if you're ready. You can stick me in anywhere. Mm -hmm. so, Good morning, John. Good morning. Joe, by this morning, looks like a different place of windows and doors and overhead doors. John, door. Like herding cats. I like to see, yeah. <laughs> I like to see uh, John Tractor's vehicles there. I like to see that. Oh, yeah. No, uh, things are going fairly well over there. Give me a little bit of update on the LEC. Dry uh, side emergency generators now set, and the uh, transfer switch is actually here for us. So we, they're getting ready to hook up permanent power to the facility. Uh, and they're starting to pull wires. Overhead doors are installed, ladders are installed, metal studs are pretty well completed in the building, and they're starting to finish up drywall. Uh, plumbing rough-ins going well with them, and uh, they're working closely with us so that we get them caught up somehow, and plus uh, getting the testing done as they're going along so we can start covering up the walls and stuff. So. Uh, they're providing a schedule for us every week and an update, you know, a progress report and working very well with Jeremy and me. Uh, so we, we got beyond that. Uh, HVAC, the RTU, the exhaust fans are installed on the roof. They're doing some of the duct work and the RTUs will be installed, rooftop units. They're going to try to get them installed here in the next week. In two weeks. Uh, that way we're set for winter. Electricians are getting you know, power to them and everything else because we'll use those units uh, through the winter, you know, a couple of them anyways. Uh, fire sprinkler, the rough-ins completed, uh, they're completed and uh, we're working on proposals for the getting gas to the laundry room laundry equipment, kitchen equipment, and I uh, issued the last change order for the mezzanine to uh, Krause this week. So you'll see that in your packet uh, next the following week. Uh, so all the change orders have been issued. Probably saw we have some grass already out there. Yeah, yeah it's got to look like it's going to grow with a mullet. <laughs> I tried to do that at my daughter's house, but it didn't roll out like that. I think if that dog gets lo loose, it'll look like he's got a ghillie suit on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks good. I, I, I have a concern of just the one area on the east side that looks like it's fairly steep above, like there's a rock drainage area there. It looks really steep, that one area. Uh, take a look at that. I, I, on that slope, on that hillside, you know, it looks easy enough on the south side and the north side, but like right in the middle, there's a rock drainage area right there. Oh, uh, that's right. where that they hit that dang rock. Oh, uh, there's oh there. really there's a mountain <laughs> there. I don't know how we're gonna tweak back that or something, but uh, yeah, it, it, it looks fairly steep. Uh, and that rock did not come out of there easily. Mm -hmm. It was that bedrock was right up to the surface over there. So, no, oh, it looked good in there. Have you had any contact with the solar guys lately? Yeah, I talked to Blue Sky Solar. <laughs> the last conversation I had with him, he was waiting for some quotes for electrical to get it if we position it on the utility bill. 
And uh, he has not spoken to me in regards to that, but he got he got a hold of me and Jeremy, and I gave him Dave River Constructions name and number because he was wanting to get some information. So we got him the size of the building and stuff. But if he is needing to know where the permanents were, yeah, or yeah, exact construction, I gave him Dave's number with Dave River Construction. And told him that would be the person. I don't know if you guys got plans on it or not. Well, we have not. And yeah. again, I I kind of slipped my mind. He uh, it was was it Tyler you were talking to or yes was, yeah okay. So I did talk to him a couple of weeks ago. Again, I just slipped my mind. I just wrote myself another note. But he was going to go back to me regarding some electrical costs as far as if there was a change in insulation costs if we decided to put it on that building. Now, as far as him seeing if that structure is yeah, I mean, oh, if, if the load factor is what it's supposed to be, I'm sure it's... <clears throat> I, I wouldn't think it'd be a problem. I don't think he was looking for that. Yeah. <clears throat> I yeah. think he was looking for installation costs. Yeah. You know, you know, depending on how he had to lay it out or what he Well, he was going to get us a quote. And yeah. then uh, when I said, where is it? He said, I'm waiting for electrical parts to get yeah. electrical parts. Uh, I have well, spoken to him. To Tyler. Okay. to Tyler. So yes, I did speak to him maybe a week ago. Yeah. It's okay. It's it's maybe a week ago. I was dealing with an insurance issue to make sure that we meet MMA use requirements. But at that time, he did indicate that he felt that the best place for the solar array was on top of that utility, utility building instead of on top of the law enforcement center. So I, I, I again, we so, were, uh, I, I think we all determined that maybe, but I'm still looking at the difference in cost if there is a difference. He's working on that. I know that <clears throat> I gave him Rock Rivers, Rock Rivers doing the electrical uh -huh. down there. So I gave him Rusty Adamson's uh, name and Doug Schnorr's name. That's the sure. lead. Mm -hmm. So he's working with them on determining what the change cost would be on that particular. So I think Tyler's working on it, Mike, to answer your question. Uh, so, but uh, I just supplied him the information he needed to get whatever he needed done. So, yeah. and my one concern on that is just that when we bid it out, everybody kind of thought the roof was the best spot. And I don't really like it on that roof. I like it better on the utility building. That seems much more easier to get off. Well, get because on. it's fastened down. Yeah. yeah. The biggest problem <laughs> is you put it on top of the jail. They were like, well, it just sits there with some sand. I mean, the only yeah. thing I can see is maintenance with all the other stuff that's on that roof and working around panels and, you know, whatever. Trying happens, to yeah. keep contractors from dropping scraps and stuff and yeah. screws and everything else up there. It, it would, it's going to be a lot better either on the metal building or on the ground there. By chance that they put the snow cap on the roof of the, the storage building, there's like little things they can put up so the metal. Oh, like snow, snow jacks. Snow jacks so the snow don't go flying off because... Uh, you see that being an issue either way. I don't know if they did or didn't. Uh, I'd have to look at the whole that. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. I mean, that'll also kind of help yeah. motivate it along to come flying on. Yeah. That's a minimal fix. I have another. Have on mine, but... Have another thing on the jail. Yeah, What's I was that? waiting for that. On the on the west side of the administration portion, there are five eaves that come down, or four eaves that come down the side of the wall. Gutters or down the side of the wall. And they drain out on the side. I know, I saw that. Um, is there anything to address that? Or is that the way it was designed? Because that, to me, just looks like a huge liability problem for us. People slipping and falling with melting ice and all that and refreezing. I mean, usually those are kind of cut into the sidewalks with a uh, kind of a drain cap or something. Or um, I, I looked at that and uh, I, I went back because I thought that was in, in the bid or in the drawings, but it wasn't. I looked at it and I, I've been trying to figure out, you know, that's only four inches there. So you got a six inch downspout coming in. You can get it in there, you know, and, and get it to flow through the sidewalk like you talked to a blackout for a trench, you know, right. just trench. Yeah. I didn't look at, I'd like to look at it with you, but uh, it doesn't look like 
There'd be a ton of activity, but it is a sidewalk. So I guess. Uh, oh, that's where a fair amount of parking's on that west side. And, yeah. You know, whether it be, it gets wet, stays wet, you get moss growing on it, it's slippery. Um, I don't think you'd get moss on it, but the ice would concern me. You know, I just, you know, whether it goes to a six and you can just cut a wider drain, but that just. Uh, I was thinking more depth down, yeah. down in there, but. Uh, Oh, I think we need to take a look at something. So I agree with you. Um, and I, I sat there and watched the report, but downspouts weren't on. And I thought the downspouts were all on the other side, but uh, that drains to that side. So there'll be a substantial amount of water coming down there. Now, it'll drain pretty good, you know, oh, yeah. when it flow, but. Still over a limited period if it's just dripping. Or the other, you know, yeah, even on that, it. could the two come down and at least, you know, hold on. I guess the good side of it is it is on the west side and we have to keep it clean anyway, one way or the other. But, mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, I don't know either. I guess it should be a lot of salt, a lot of, it's going to be a lot of forethought care. instead of an afterthought, is my guess, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was not you, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and the we're we're stuff up the uh, sand works good. So, yeah. uh, no, I'll take a look at that and see what we can come up with. Me and Jeremy talked about that and he just said, Jesus Christ. And I said, Well, we're standing there watching them pour that damn thing, you know, and it didn't hit me then. But uh, that, then I, when they put them downspouts on, oh, that's going to be a problem. Because the one is going to be a problem, anyways, because it's right in the corner. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what we'd do with that one because it would be that one would be a difficult one to take care of. But uh, if we get the major portion of it taken care of, it would really help the situation. Yeah, because we ended up putting the storm drain in. There's a lot of things that had to change there as far as elevation wise. I really wish the building had been up another foot and a half, 18 inches. But the uh, they're concerned about the percentage grade of for ADA and all this other happy stuff. You uh, can't cry about there. There's nothing we can do about that. It is what it is. But I just look at that as a that's a going to be a point of contention or whatever because that's going to be a big liability. Issue. Yeah, I, I'd like to find a way to do something with that. So. I think that we can do that. Typically, there's a blackout drench drain, mm -hmm. and then you can uh, put a, a diamond plate on top of it right. for that. And that's right. what I was intending if we make that work. Sounds good. Uh, as far as the Jackson County Fair and Extension, uh, I have to pay apps. So there's one change order for that. It's a change order to deduct for $6,000. Uh, we were able to do a leak the uh, dishwasher hood and, and, and reduce the amount of uh, of uh, makeup air we needed. Uh, fire sprinklers done, metal studs, drywall, and the finish are completed over there. They're finishing sealing the building. Plumbing rough ends compute, uh, completed. Rooftop units are set. They're running gas mains to them right now. The gas mains are in at both buildings from Black Hill. Fire sprinklers pretty well completed. And, uh, we're hoping to get the parking lot forward both there and over, get that final parking lot forward mm -hmm. over at the jail, too. So, did they, they get the? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Did they get the um, jail site building power washed off and all that done? They got a power wash, decided to drive into the landscape. Sealed, the landscape. or weren't they, didn't they have to power wash it and seal it, so that's why they didn't finish the seating? Was he getting, does he have to come back then and finish that or something? Did I hear that? The, the, the contractor, the, the painter that's over there is doing the painting and sealing at our building, so as soon as he finishes sealing that, he's moving over to this building to finish sealing. And uh, Schenkel, is it? I believe that the landscaper, he's going to do the whole site. He, we just didn't want to get it in there and have it all messed up. So he's planning on coming back and finishing the entire site. Around the building there. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it, it will be finished. Uh, he's done a wonderful job out there. So I've been real happy with him. 
but uh, both projects that come along fine. We're down to, you know, we're really close on the budget for the Jackson County Fair started up there higher and we've been able to change some stuff and move some stuff around. Uh, you know, eliminate the fire hydrant because the city wouldn't use fire hydrant because it's privately owned line and stuff and they can't. So we we're able to save some money and we, and we got it pretty well within the budget. But there's, they're open, open in December, you know, have an open house in December. So uh, I think that's very possible. Good news. Any other yeah. questions for John? Come along. Looks like it's come along anyway. I haven't yeah. talked to the interior lately, but. Oh, we got people out there for change. So, I mean, yeah. they're hitting it hard right now and uh, uh, we'll get the material order. I think we're going to be more more waiting on material than anything else. Uh, Girardi's, I'm going to go out there this afternoon. They got uh, one of the stairs fabricated and ready to go. Talk to the painter. I'd like to paint them before they go into the facility if possible. Are they powder coated or no? No, painted. They're, they're painted. Okay. So, you know, you go to paint that mesh, you'll have it all over the dang place. And so uh, it, it's a bolted connection. So I'm talking to Jeremy and Sean and seeing if we can get them out there and and uh, painter can paint them and then we'll bring them in and install them. So. Okay, appreciate it. Okay. Andrew, any questions or anyone else? Any questions? Oh, oh, I think for me. Appreciate the update. When's it gonna, when are you going to open? Uh, which one? Jail. Jail. Jail is probably going to be in February because uh, the door, the locks and everything, detention equipment, there's only... Any addition? Yeah, Southern Folgers bought out Brinks now, so they're <laughs> the only lock supplier at this for now, and uh, doors are, there's only trust, you know... <laughs> What you do is buy everybody out and just raise prices, I guess. And, <laughs> and, and then, uh, you know, it's just crazy today. They, I think the manufacturers just got used to longer lead times. <laughs> I mean, I don't care if it's a couch or a frigger. I mean, we're, you know, you're waiting for stuff forever. And I'm mean, having a terrible time at Payroll Alto is because I can't get transfer switch, which means I can't get permanent power. And uh, they're moving E ninety one one, and I gotta have permanent power, and, mm. or the state will be down on me like crazy. But uh, I, I I think that uh, you'll see the fair will have their open house in December. But I would I would we gotta get people you know moved into the facility. So I'm hoping in February, late January, the, 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 jail. the jail. But. Jail. Uh, do you have a completion time on the administrative side when that'll be ready where we can start putting stuff in their desks, whatnot, tables, chairs? Oh, yeah, I would figure you're going to be in December, you know, on that, you know, moving stuff in. Uh, Bjorn, yeah, I think that we'll probably November is, I wanted to get up here to look at his senior email uh, to possibly get SCI in there to start running cabling and stuff like that. I really kind of wanted to have the painting done before they came in because otherwise they'll have all the wire painted and everything else and the labels and all and it would be a mess. So. But uh, no, I figure we could start moving, you know, start moving furniture and stuff in there around that time. Appreciate it. Okay. Well, all right. You Thanks, guys John. Have a great day. We know where to find you. Anyhow, yeah. Did you bring the change order today for signature? Yes. Okay. Is it on the agenda? It is now. <laughs> oh, well, I, I can, yeah. I can. If you have it. I do have it right here. Because I had the cost for. What do you think? So I've got change order 3-1. Yeah. Okay, I'll get to it here. Okay. 3-1. Yeah. 3-3. Three dash three and three dash one. What well, you sent us three dash one for Crawford heating and cooling. That's yeah. Three dash one. Three dash three is for ninety-seven thousand nine hundred thirty dollars. Well, I don't have that one. To Krause plumbing and heating. Oh, well, that's for the jail. Oh, that's for the jail. jail. Okay. Yeah. That I don't have. Okay. Well, but I can. I, do I don't have the payout for that yet done. So. But I've got the change order for the. 
the deduct you talked about. For the deduct of yeah, the six thousand. Okay, that so area. I do have that. Okay. Um, so, and I have that as change order three dash one. Yes. That's, yep. Okay. Change order three dash one there, and like I said, we deleted the dishwasher. Right? We like deducts. Yeah. We're heading the right direction. You got you got one here for me to sign or yeah. somebody to sign or what? Yeah, it's uh it'd be a recommendation to go ahead and prove it. But not yet. I'll leave that to Lisa. Yeah. We'll get to it here real soon. Oh okay. No, I'm... Can you sign one? She's over there. So what? I can take it with me. You know, John. Just, hang on, just a second. Let's just go through. Lisa, put down for just sit in five minutes. This won't take a few minutes. Oh, okay. Well, I'm ready if you need to put hand and stuff. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need okay. So I need a motion to approve the minutes of the September 29, 2023 board proceedings as written by Auditor Smith and authorized publication in the official newspapers. Second. So, motion and second to approve the minutes of September 29, 23. Board proceedings as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. I also need a motion to accept the place on file and authorize the chair's signature and the county recorder's report of fees collected for the month of September 2023 in the amount of $45,752.75. Second. Motion and second to approve the county's chair signature on the county recorder's report of fees collected for month of September as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. So I need a motion to approve invoices for $8,069.12 to Midwest Construction Consultants, Inc., $80,536.25 to Peak Construction, $16,292.50 to Hometown Plumbing and Heating, $76,171.95 to Crawford Company, $18,075.01 to Stickley Electric, $18,591.50 to Midwest Auto Fire Sprinkler, $240 to Tri State Porta Potty, $20,105.23 to Schneider Flooring, $772.75 to AT Disposal, for a total cost of $238,854.31, and authorize the chair signature on the project cost recap for the Jackson County Fair and ISU Extension the 4-H Outreach Center for the month ending September 30th, 2023. So, the, the so that 76,171.95 to Crawford Company includes the $6,000 deduct. Uh, the $6,000 deduct came out of there. Yeah. So it's all reflected in there? That's just, it will, yeah, it's out of here. So we can have the board sign those also today. Then, yeah. Since you have them. Oh, yeah. They do that. See? Yeah. Yep. We're going to get it all done here. So okay. I also need a motion to approve change order number uh, 3-1 to Crawford Heating and Cooling Company for a $6,068.76 deduct for the dishwasher exhaust hood and decrease the size of the makeup air unit. Okay. So... First of all, the invoices that you presented. I'm a little fast this morning. Yes. No. Oh, you, you there was a motion, but I don't think you voted on it. No, we had a motion and we had a question, I think. So yeah. I'm so I was just asking if that deduct was in everything you read. So I'm assuming it's not, and we're gonna do that after the fact that the, it's deducted on the cost recap from their total contract value. Okay. So they still have a hundred and twelve thousand to finish yet. So it's deducted. It'll come out of what's gonna be built. What they're gonna build in the future. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the invoices as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Now <laughs> are we approving the change? The change order three dash one to Crawford Heating and Cooling Company. That's the six thousand and six dollars and seventy six cent deduct for the dishwasher exhaust hood and to decrease the size of the makeup area. Second. A motion to second approve the change order three dash one as presented. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Same sign. Motion carried. Lisa Jake. And this is okay, this is done. Yeah. I look this done. look this over if you would. Mm -hmm. And if that is for me, I'm gonna 
and have it soon. I've got another meeting here coming, right? Okay. No, I don't need this proof to add this provided that's a you need this, you need this material. Nope, oh, that's good. Okay. And then leave me what you need. Leave me what you uh need to be approved next week, the change order. Okay. Another one? Yeah. All right. So um Lisa, is that oh include your business or yeah, that's all that I have for the board today. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> hey, and you know what? I am done with um, my portion of the meeting. But I just uh, today, though, I did want you to get a copy of this uh, the opioid form. Yep. I did. I did it just put in so they had to code it, and um, that was the main thing. That was one of the things that I wanted done is that it had to be coded and to get the appropriate signatures on it. So if you agree with this. Can I go ahead and distribute it? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I didn't have an issue with that. Okay. As long as it meets all the requirements you have, I'm good with it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy with it. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, I didn't do anything yet. How many were there? Three. One for me, one for two for Lisa. Because I delivered these to the bank. I took these and delivered them to the bank. John, is it just the front page or I got to go just through the front page? Okay, thank you. Normally go through the front I have three more for you to sign, Mike. Um, you need them all signed? I deliver them to the bank. Okay. Yep, I, I keep a copy, you get a copy, and I deliver the rest to the bank. And they pay. <laughs> These two are yours, yet, John? Yeah. Uh, there are five leases, I guess. Oh, okay. Well, then I can give them to Lisa when. Yep. Nope. Good good to go, to John. Thank okay. You. Thanks, John. Okay. And Luann? This is what we need. We're going to give them for next week. Uh, just change or I dropped yeah. it off with Shelly. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, that was confusing. Uh, well, I'm sorry. 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 <laughs> 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 okay. We'd like to keep people confused. Yeah. I didn't know I was going to be able to do that today. So mm -hmm. it's great. You get ahead of the game. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right, John. Have a good day. Thanks, John. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. It is still morning, right? It seems like it's been long meeting already. Okay. Calendar for um, starting tomorrow, Wednesday, October 4th at 4 p.m. Um, there is a Wednesdays Are Possible meeting over at Innovate 120, if any of you want to attend that. At 6 p.m. Wednesday night is the Jackson County Communication Center Advisory Board meeting um, at the Cultural Law Center. I think you said you were going to go and maybe Nin was going to go to that. We have two positions on that board. So, um, but and, you, <laughs> <laughs> you said you had a conflict anyway, I think, for that. He's always conflicted. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Monday, October 9th at 7 30 a.m. is an early childhood Iowa executive. Committee meeting by Zoom for Nina if she wants to go to that. Our next regular meeting will be Tuesday, October 10th at 9 a.m. That afternoon at 4 o'clock is the Makoka River Watershed Management Authority's Executive Committee meeting by Zoom for Don. Not too bad a week, all in all, for meetings. I think Wednesdays are possible, or is that 4 30 though? This? Yeah, they just changed it. Yes, I got that this morning. You're correct. It's at 4 30. Okay. Um, I think the only other business I had today was if you wanted to talk about the Pine Valley 28E agreement, and I'm not sure exactly where we're at with that. For uh, was Nathan going to give us some more information on that? No, I don't I remember. Good with it. And I would ask that you check with him first and make sure that we're all in the open up there. I I didn't. I know we talked about uh, why are we doing things here? It was pretty common. But... And I did send it to to John. He's you take okay. a look at it. Okay. Make sure he's okay with it. Since it's a 28E, supposedly. So if it's on there and we can do it, I don't mind doing it. 
Okay, so I'm not sure where we're at with that one, I guess. Good. That was it. Thank, Thank you. you. Other boards or commission reports? Um, had a really good municipal league meeting. We had a good attendance, like the really good positive news, like Andrew had some positive news with their jail, the old jail, like it could be sold. Mm -hmm. And and Bellevue had to report on the $3,300,000 donation for the new park up north of town, one private individual. And oh, my, 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 I had a, Baldwin had a report, but it was a good, it was a good meeting, very positive. So I'll wait for the minutes and forward them on to you just so that whatever we had in them. So. Tomorrow night is the Bellevue fire. Um, that was very good. You have, we'll be at over here now. Station advisory. Uh, any other business before the board? Iris, we already talked about. Um, we met with the home base Iowa people. We're Moving forward on trying to set up some incentives incentives for that. So we're trying to keep it basic. Um, just you know, uh, maybe two or three um, incentives for for veterans moving back into the community. So they have a seed money that was um, donated from. Um, JCEA to get it started for this year. And then from there, they will, they will look to us as possibly helping fund that. Good news. Motion to adjourn. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion adjourned. Thank you.